Hello and a very warm welcome to this Bitwig tutorial. This episode is called a Group vs. Master Track, but it's not about the verses, it is more like a strategy when to use what. And um, this is a nice way, a nice strategy to proceed in um, producing your tracks. But let me show that to you and let's get started. So this is a small tune I have, not very, uh, not very much, uh, very, <laughs> not many tracks here, and this is all in MIDI. And now I'm on the stage where I say, okay, I want to have more control over it, so I have to switch from MIDI to audio, for example. And there's something, uh, there's an option where you can group tracks, and if I, for example, group those tracks with um, group track control g these tracks are grouped and you you can fold it like that and you still can see um, what's in these what's in this group like this so here you can see yeah this is de um, the detail of this clip there are more clips so it's less detail and there are three clips you see the colors and but Normally you know which uh, clips are in there, so you can just um, yeah, uh, fold that inside and you see, okay, this is a group track where I have all my, my um, different clips that I wanted to group together. And you should always name your groups something like this. So this is no. <laughs> This is the leads group, for example, but you can use such a group just, just for one track only. If I group that right there, so this is just one group with a kick. And why I'm doing that, so group kick, is because when I click on this group track, I have the option show master track content or show group track content. And um, the default setting is show group track content. So you see the group, the content of the group track like this. But you can switch that to show master track content. And if you do that, the track will be empty. But um, you, um, when the track is empty, you can bounce your whole group on there. In this case, it's just Let's do it over here. It's just that kick. So I marked it with the um, time selection tool. Right click and say bounce. So everything in that. Wait, I say bounce in place. Control B. So everything in that group will be bounced. Everything with um, all devices with all effects that are in this group. If you use send buses that are out um, uh, out of this group, <laughs> out of this group, they are outside of this group, like over here, for example, or um, you have a, um, um, a main group track and it's not directly in this group, this won't be bounced. So there should always be something like um, um, uh, uh, you should always check the setting if there's enough going out to the group track, uh, to the send buzzer. Sorry. Okay, so now you have this audio over here. And the nice thing about this audio is that everything below this audio will be muted. So if I do that, for example, over here, I go to my leads and there are several tracks in here. And I click over to show master track content. So it's empty as well. Now I um, choose the time selection tool, right click, bounce in place. And now I have all the audio in that group track. So if I now play, there's still the head, the snare and uh, uh, the head and the snare as MIDI. And all the other tracks are still active in a way, but um, as soon there is an audio clip in this group, um, track. Everything down here will be muted. So if it won't be muted, it should be uh, um, 
much more louder so I let it play from here and just fold that in so you can hear it. <laughs> So it's the same um, volume over here. Um, but the nice thing about that is that you can switch from MIDI to audio seamlessly. And you could, for example, deactivate all those uh, tracks so they don't use a CPU anymore. And you have the audio. And if you need the MIDI again, you can just activate it again, delete that example, activate uh, these tracks and just take here oops take here wait <laughs> take here a new bounce in place so these are the tracks that are used then deactivate it again and you still have your audio so you can produce stems um, from your from your audio automatically and the nice thing about that is for example for that i deactivate that as well so this doesn't use any CPU anymore. And this is a normal audio clip. So you can do everything you do normally on an audio clip. And this is like chopping it up. So what, I, what do I have here? I have um, two kick drums in a bar. So that sounds at the moment like this. If I go on solo, so very long kick drum. And I decide no, this is far too long. I don't want to have such a long kick drum. So I right click on the audio event itself, slice in place, use every half note. Now it's sliced in every half note. Now I select those all because there are some more um, kicks over here. And then I reduce it to a quarter, for example, and use some fade out. So right now, if I play it, kick drum is far more clean. And over here I can do the same, like this is sliced. I could slice it even a little bit more like this, for example, and here, for example. And then I try to I don't want to have that one, that one. And over here, I want to, oops, I want to like that, that out, and, and well, so maybe it should sound much more clean now. Like this. There's a, still a little click in there. I won't hunt that now because it takes so much time. But I would ask you kindly to um, do that for me. because that helps the channel a little bit and um, keeps me motivated. And the um, best reason for that is um, I'm really happy if you write me something in the comments, say hello, ask questions or give some hints, some information you know about such things for me, for others. So you share your knowledge like I do in the videos and would be really nice if you just if you know something, just write it down so everybody can read it. And maybe, um, yeah, if, if it's if it's um, so interesting, maybe I make uh, another tutorial of it. And if I do, if this hint is from you, if you allow it, I will um, um, say that this hint is from you. So um, this is a way where you can um, go in a stage of your production where you have a lot of things, for example, in media or everything in media like I had in this little tune and now want to go um, 
in the direction of audio to have more control over the sound. So in this case, like the kick drum, this was far too long. I could have done something like a side chain or ducking or something like that. But at the end, uh, editing the audio itself is sometimes much more precise than using another MIDI instrument and doing such stuff. Or you could do that with automations as well and, and so on. But um, I tend to um, use um, audio production to the end of, of my tracks just to have the most control over it because yeah, you see, um, there's nothing that can sound in a way. So um, yeah, it's it's the last step you can do. And of course, you have um, already stems. If so, if you have a, some interesting percussion or something, um, you could uh, save that as a stem and reuse it in another um, project. Or maybe think of your um, of your community maybe there are people that are using loops or stems or something maybe think about to um, tell them that there are some and if they are interested they can use that depends on always think about um, the license you're giving like creative commons and yeah that's it um, I hope you liked that tip and I hope you can use it and maybe you uh, integrate that in your workflow. I will definitely do that uh, even more than I did because um, the last workflow I used was bouncing down but not with those um, uh, group tracks, master track content or uh, group track content. And uh, this is a really practical way of there's always a, a way back to if there was a mistake and you don't have to create that from the, from scratch. Okay, that's it right now. I hope I will you soon see you soon again. Um, I hope you stay healthy and yeah, see you. Ciao, ciao.